Here we are at the final session of the day, but it's a wildly important one. Before I talk to you about this important topic, though, I want to remind you once again, don't miss the opening tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. You want to make sure that you catch what I have to share with you then because it's some really useful and important stuff. Now, in this session, we're going to be talking about proximity tracing. Things have changed in our world a lot this year. And proximity tracing is one of the important demands a lot of organizations are making. They want to be able to use automated tools for this purpose. I'm not going to go too deep into talking to you about what proximity tracing even is. I'll let our speaker do that for you, but let's go right to the topic. Hello everyone, my name is Sudhir Mata, as was introduced, I'm the VP of Products at Juniper Mist. In this session, we're going to look at proximity tracing and how technology can help bring back employees back safely or students or faculty or guests or customers, consumers, whatever business you're in, how can technology help you bring your constituents back and what are the macro conditions and what are the enterprise IT's role and the technology role in that. Let me dive into this. At the macro level, they, the government institutions and healthcare institutions have a major responsibility to do contact tracing or proximity tracing. And for their initiative, Apple and Google have really come together in a rare partnership to bring Bluetooth low energy based technology from the Apple and the Google platform to help government and healthcare institutions contact trace in a more deterministic way. An example being, let's say you were traveling in a train and you don't know if your neighbor sitting on the next seat had COVID-19 or has COVID-19, the Apple-Google partnership can tell you uh, potentially if you were exposed. However, when it comes to the enterprise, the Apple-Google partnership unfortunately isn't bringing that data to the enterprises. So we Juniper ourselves, our uh, safety and security teams were dealing with this as we were trying to bring essential employees back to work, right? This is where technology can help, right? And even though I'm gonna present in the context of what Miss Juniper can bring to the market, I wanna make this more generic for you. In general, the technology that Wi-Fi and BLE can help play a role in this contact proximity tracing initiative. Let's go into it. So Apple and Google in, in, in April launched an initiative whereby they said if anonymously without identity of the individual being included in this initiative, they were able to start to track who all may have been in the proximity, in the vicinity of a patient that has self-selected and identified as having been diagnosed with COVID-19. So once the patient goes to a healthcare institution or a government testing facility and self-selects that he or she has COVID-19, then Apple and Google will retroactively look at all the devices that may have been in the vicinity of this original device without disclosing the original source or the original device or even uh, the original user, be able to say, hey, you may have been in proximity of somebody that has had COVID-19, so you may want to self-quarantine. This was a very noble initiative launched in April. 
Unfortunately, with regulation and some many practical hurdles that Apple and Google ran into, only three out of the 50 states in the US ultimately adopted this. Several countries outside of the US have indeed adopted this. In the country of India, as an example, it's mandatory for enterprises to issue um, for employees to download the government issued contact tracing app so that they can be notified by the government. Let's look at what is possible within the enterprise. So within the enterprise, the questions that were being asked were, can you tell us if one of our employees comes back, he, was on the, he or she was in the office and then went to a doctor, self-selected and, and, and now has COVID positive. Once he or she informs the safety, security or health department of the enterprise, how does the enterprise react? And that's the subject of the rest of our conversation here, but that is what enterprises are grappling with. Okay, if one of our employees comes back and say they, uh, they had COVID positive test result, how do you react? The first thing enterprises have asked us to, to look at is how do we retroactively go and look at what, where has this individual been and who else has, has been in the same location for an extended amount of time, right? It's the combination of being next to that individual and also being there for a certain amount of duration. That's number one. Number two is, okay, where all has this individual been? So if I need to go clean, if I need to deep clean, if I need to you know, cordon off that, uh, that area, we know the zones where this individual has been. And then lastly, which zones have high congestion and are dealing with high traffic and maybe more signage is required or, or some notifications are required so that employees and guests will take care entering or avoiding that zone. So number one, where has the user been? Number two, who else has been in the same zones? And number three, you know, what are hot zones in the, in the venue? So before we go into looking at how we can solve these three use cases, let's look at what you should expect from an infrastructure perspective and what the employee carries uh, so that you can marry this location data with um, the infrastructure visibility and come up with actionable insight for proximity tracing. So let's start with the infrastructure. On the infrastructure side, we want a network that can look at and receive BLE, that can transmit BLE beacons so that you can build an app for communication and can also passively listen for, for BLE devices. Also on the Wi-Fi side, you want a network that can receive look, uh, and, and triangulate and locate Wi-Fi devices connected and unconnected. So five vectors a mobile app for BLE uh, B, with BLE beacon detection, an asset tag detection with granularity of location, being able to see the device and put them in certain zones and be able to now be, correlate that with other users in the same zone, and Wi-Fi wise listening to connected and unconnected devices. Now, what has actually worked in the real world, right? Uh, you know, all of these are good things to see and know. What is the best way? What is the best metric of getting to deterministic contact tracing and proximity tracing? So let's dive into that. So the three primary vectors that we can listen for are obviously Wi-Fi devices. 
that's an easy one and you can start with that for just understanding and you know zone based notifications on where you're seeing more devices and movement of devices happening however you know an individual can have a phone a laptop an ipad a, an apple watch all kinds of devices on their person and so that confuses the, the equation on how many users in a zone and you know it, when do you notify who do you notify so wi-fi is good at a macro level but not necessarily at a proximity tracing detail level the mobile app on the right hand side you see is very very good for communication and will also deliver great accuracy especially if you use a juniper mist system which is the only system in the industry that has sort of a directional ble antenna array that you saw the picture of in the previous slide with that kind of you know beacon density that that you now get one to three meter accuracy when you use a mobile app however the mobile app has the disadvantage of when it goes into background mode you can't keep track of where the individual may have gone right so these are two very interesting bookends of you know not high accuracy but extremely high accuracy both has have some you know um, puts and takes in terms of their ability to directly deliver actionable in uh, insight for the enterprise so that leaves us with badges with with ble badges and a directional antenna array listening and triangulating the ble badges this is what we have found to be the most practical and an executable use case in fact as i said earlier the juniper enterprise our safety and security teams have now started to issue ble badges adjunct to our id badges when anyone enters any juniper building around the world so why are badges so uniquely practical when it comes to proximity tracing for the enterprise number one there is one badge per person right and so there is uniqueness so when you see three devices three badges in a zone you know that is three individuals and that makes it very very deterministic on reliable metrics of for zone analytics proximity tracing number two the badges are always on right and so that's a huge parameter where when you're trying to truly track people's journey in the enterprise from a proximity tracing perspective you want a device that is always on and something that usually enterprise employees seem to carry all the time right we may not have our laptop with us but we always have two things with us we always have our phone and we always have our badge for entry and exit into labs and buildings and 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 cordoned off areas we always have our badge so that badge seems to have become the sweet spot for proximity tracing lots and lots of our customers are now starting to use either contact io or hid or any generic ble badges that are useful for this purpose now let's look at okay you now have issued badges to your employees or your guests what do what can you do what can you see based on that so what what you can see based on that is being able to go in and look at exactly you know let's say a user comes back and tells the enterprise hey i was tested covid positive um, i'm going to go self quarantine myself now our safety security and health department have this unique opportunity to look at okay where all has this user been 
okay, this user has been in the marketing area and the sales operations area, and so we know how much time was spent. And then, very specifically, you can go down to, okay, you know, how much time was spent, you know, and in what hour, in what area, and then specifically, okay, these five users spent time in the same zones, and this was the amount of time spent jointly from the patient that self-selected and said, I I've been tested COVID positive, and um, other users that have been there. So how are we protecting privacy in all of this? Number one, IT does not have access to it. Nobody outside of our safety security team has access to this dashboard. This is specifically built for safety security teams, not even in the main MIST dashboard uh, that we've built. Number two is the beacon from the badge is a generic code. There is no mapping of that BLE ID um, uh, in whether that's captured publicly, whether it's captured by the MIST system. Nobody has, has access to the mapping of that BLE ID to which user was carrying it. Only the safety, security, and health teams have that. So th then when they see other devices, they don't disclose patient zero. So first, there is no mapping of this user ID, uh, um, the beacon ID to any user. Second, um, the patient zero is never disclosed, right? And third, um, these devices, again, this access to this dashboard is specifically for the safety, safety security teams. No one else has access, right? This is how we vetted with our legal team, our safety security team. And of course, when an employee is entering the building, we have, a, have them sign a form acknowledging that they're carrying this badge and for what purpose um, this, this data is gonna be used, how the data is gonna be used, and how long the data is gonna be stored. And so far, we've had great reception. If any of you need more data in constructing your legal statement and conformance form, we're happy to share ours. Um, and we put this publicly on mist.com slash proximity hyphen tracing. Now, you can take this to a more generic version to understand you know, where the congestion hotspots are and see how you can let people know what zones to avoid. So this particular dashboard has no user-specific data. Everything is generalized. But the idea here is, is that zone by zone, you can say, hey, this zone has the capacity of, you know, one or two occupants or six or seven occupants. And once you specify that occupancy and a minimum dwell time for, per zone, then, and you can also, you know, include whether you want Wi-Fi devices included or not included. You want only asset tags included or not included, you know, Either way, once you've selected your parameters, we can tell you which zones in the organization are compliant with their capacity metrics, right? This is so important such that you can actually give this info uh, to employees to see, ah, this cafeteria is busy, that, that cafeteria is not. This restaurant is busy, that restaurant is not. You can actually make this data, completely anonymized data, available to users to then make it actionable, right? Now, many of you um, are also ServiceNow customers. ServiceNow has done an amazing job launching COVID safe applications, the safe workspace applications uh, by ServiceNow. What, what ServiceNow has done is they have natively integrated some of these apps into their own system. So now, as an example, if you're a Mist customer, you can put your API token into ServiceNow. It will go and fetch 
all the sites within your MIST dashboard, all the um, uh, organization specific data within the MIST dashboard. And, and once that integration, that bi-directional flow is working, then you can take, put this to action. Let's say now one user comes in and says, hey, you know, I went to the doctor and I got tested and, and I'm now COVID positive. Let's say that user is Abel, right? Abel came back and said, hey, um, you know, my test came positive and I've been in the office, you know, such and such day. Then without leaving the ServiceNow dashboard, you can actually, um, query the, um, the missed, missed proximity tracing analytics, bring the data back into service now and say, ah, David, Lou, Phil, and Bo, you guys have, uh, have been in proximity with somebody that tested for positive for COVID-19. So you may now need to potentially self-quarantine, right? Again, without disclosing, disclosing patient zero, without um, and, and completely anonymizing the notifications, you are able to do proximity tracing within the enterprise. Now, what you can do is actually take this further, right? You can actually take some of the hot zone um, schema that I've showed and actually send alerts uh, to people in the zones to say, hey, um, there is, uh, this zone is hyper congested, uh, uh, too many people in one place, you know, maybe you want to avoid that zone. There are certain public venues, hotels and malls uh, and, and open auditorium restaurant type um, uh, locations where they have actually taken this hot zone alerting uh, mechanism put it on a QR code and let actually in, in one particular hotel uh, customer of ours, what they're doing is they're, they're actually enabling a QR code where users can see uh, without IT intervention where um, which restaurants are likely occupied, which areas are likely occupied and which areas are heavily congested, right? So a lot of very, very, very interesting applications here. So in terms of practical tips on how to make this real for your own enterprise, number one, you need an infrastructure that can receive and, and accurately create zones and be able to then locate you know, devices, ideally BLE asset tags into a zone with certain specificity. And then number two, ideally you want to bring, you know, asset tags as badges for guests, visitors or employees visiting so that you can tie it positively to one, one device to one person. And number three is you want to set expectations that you know, RF is a fickle medium. You're at the wireless uh, technology forum today. RF is a fickle medium. You want to set expectations that your accuracy is going to be in the, you know, uh, you know two to five meter radius when, it, when you're using an asset, um, asset tag and one to three meters when you're using a mobile app, right? So once you have those, uh, those guidelines down, you can actually truly deploy this technology um, widely. We are, we're, we're deploying uh, you know, this technology right now at, at a very large university and 9,000 AP deployment is going up as we speak, about six to 700 APs are being deployed per week um, in preparation for you know, opening the college back up for students to come back safely for proximity tracing. So lots of very exciting verticals, use cases, and, um, and opportunities to safely bring, bring employees back. Thank you very much for listening. I'm gonna turn it over to now, uh, the, the, the open live Q&A. 
I'm looking forward to what questions you may have. And by the way, I'm going to be giving away some access points uh, for everybody. Uh, um, I'm, going to pick, I'm going to pick some people um, within the people that ask questions to give away uh, some access points so you can try some of the proximity tracing stuff for yourself at your office or at your home. Thank you very much for listening and let's go to the Q&A. Sadir, welcome. Thank you for joining us live. Thank you, Tom. Uh, glad to be here. Lots of exciting conversation. Uh, clearly the last session, uh, uh, I know it's a little bit late in Europe. Uh, you probably started drinking way early, but uh, I'm glad uh, some of you stuck around. So I appreciate the opportunity uh, to participate. Uh, amazing format and, and uh, great content so far. Absolutely, absolutely. And we appreciate your session. I know I liked it especially. Um, I've been doing a lot of studying and research in, in recent months on the impact that COVID has had on, in, in my case, most of my study has been on the impact it's had on the IoT space. Um, and uh, of course, this is related to that with BLE. And a, a lot of people don't realize sometimes, I think that a lot of the BLE sensing that we do and things like that uh, is generally categorized in the IoT space. You know, in the Wi-Fi world, the people that are Wi-Fi specialists tend to think of BLE as an add-on to their Wi-Fi, and it's just something else they're doing in addition to Wi-Fi. But what technically they're doing there is they're implementing IoT technologies. And so IoT has already made its way into a lot of our spaces without us even realizing it. Um, and it's going to continue to do so. So what I'd like to do is spend a little bit of time talking more about uh, the BLE badges and um, some of those things that you want to share with us there. And we do have a question even that has come in that says, is Juniper building or selling the BLE badges? So uh, go ahead and talk to us a bit about that. Yeah, no, thank you, Tom. Uh, so, so no, definitely we are not building badges. Uh, um, uh, there's, there's quite a market out there. The two leading players, I would say, uh, the market leader is definitely HID. Um, so Juniper uses HID. Somebody asked um, um, how the badge looks. Uh, and the HID badge uh, uh, looks like this, if you could see my video. Uh, and and we, we stuck our old badge inside the sleeve, uh, the HID sleeve. So this one's good. And then uh, contact IO, con contact is K-O-N. Actually, I put it in the chat window. So contact IO has, has some good badges. Uh, so we Excellent. actually are trying both the HID badges and contact IO for our employees. We've started with, um, with uh, obviously, uh, the U.S. Uh, Sunnyvale headquarters, and now have rolled this program out worldwide. Uh, you know, uh, our another big deployment is a campus in ben Bangalore, India, and that's where we've started this as well. So really, again, this is not an IT project. It was led and spearheaded by our uh, our safety security team, and uh, I think uh, it it comes to answer that one simple question. One most important question is when one person in your building, in your store, in your hotel, in your uh, uh, retail location, um, gets come back, comes back with its COVID positive, how are you gonna react? I think that's, that's what this whole thing is about. Absolutely. And you know, another uh, really good question has come in and I think the questioner already knows the answer, but that's okay, we'll, we'll ask it anyway. Peter McKenzie asks, is there an excellent course that people can take to learn more about this mist and BLE location. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I think uh, uh, there is actually a great course designed by uh, uh, Peter and team. Uh, no that way, is <laughs> Peter designed the course that he's asking about, really? <laughs> <laughs> Somehow that worked out, but uh, it, it truly is getting rave reviews so far at MIST. You know, our courses have been, you know, open and, and free and, and, and you know, um, really good integrated learning. But, um, you know, we've, we've poured some rocket fuel with, uh, with uh, uh, Peter's help on an actual MIST AI uh, course that is sort of, you know, proctored and everything. Uh, we highly encourage people to go through that. Obviously, um, uh, there's a ton of other uh, Wi-Fi rock stars uh, that are being signed on to uh, to teach this course. But, uh, you know, if you're in the early few, you have the privilege and honor to be in Peter's class. So, so yeah, absolutely. I think that would be a great starting point. If you've never experienced MIST or you have deployed MIST but haven't gone to the 
uh, the deep end of that. Uh, so it would be a great place to uh, get started. Absolutely. Uh, another question's come in. Uh, do you have any already installed solutions for this contact tracing up and running? Um, and also, is there a white paper on it on your website or something like that that people, people can reference? Yeah, so mist.com slash proximity hyphen tracing or contact hyphen tracing, uh, mist.com. Um, and and there's, there's actually white papers. In fact, the best piece is hearing our, our um, head of security uh, speak to how this has had impact on, on his operations at Juniper. You know, he, he talks about his journey from going from manual contact tracing to, um, to now uh, the, uh, the BLE badge-based contact tracing and just the change in how they're operating the buildings, right? You know, Juniper, I think about 20% of our employees are back at work. Uh, they're tagged as essential workers. And, and the good and bad part is, yes, they're only 20% versus 100%, but the bad part is they're deemed essential for a reason. They're running physical labs and data centers and, and everything. So consequently, this is a very, very critical function. And, and then beyond Juniper, we have universities already deployed this and running this uh, and, and running with this data. We have retail, um, you know, entertainment retail, uh, several of the uh, retailers um, uh, are running this. And of course, corporate and enterprise prices, right? Um, so healthcare, this is, I mean, honestly, there's never been a more universal reason to deploy BLE than this, right? Literally think of any building anywhere in the world. If you need to bring people back, you need a solution. Otherwise you're just winging it or taking a chance. That's a good point. That's a good point. Um, another question that has come in, um, looking at this technology and, and thinking about how it might be applied elsewhere. Uh, Carson asks, do you think there's a way for this to be implemented for the same technology used for hand-washing proximity sensors for hospitals? Yeah, um, uh, I, I think it's a more specific case. I think uh, the hand-washing use case in hospitals uh, definitely, again, what what have we done differently, right? If, you, if you've been a Cisco customer and a Aruba customer, you know, location is not new to the industry at all, sure. right? And, and AeroScout has been there and, and, and um, you know, Eka, uh, Eka has done dabbled into the Cisco MSC con, uh, and then uh, connected mobile experiences. The story and the use case hasn't really changed. What has changed is two fundamental things, right? Is our ability to deploy at scale using machine learning. One of the things you will see if you deploy a missed network for location, you deploy these APs in the ceiling and uh, you know, almost without any calibration, you can actually get a blue dot experience. That's the machine learning piece, right? And, uh, and that's critical. And that's that's ability to deploy at scale. And then second, the BLE antenna array adds a, a vector of, of higher accuracy, right? And then the third piece, uh, what you will find is, is um, the low latency because of the cloud nature of this, right? So those three things is what is different, but the use cases we're going after, yes, uh, we'd be just one, a very large hospital chain uh, in the Georgia, um, in the state of Georgia uh, here in the US. And um, yeah, they're, they're, all of these use cases are actually already there uh, using AeroScout as, as a location in addition to what, what we have. Okay, excellent. Well, um, there are more questions and we'll take care of those in the Q&A panel with text at a later time. But what I do wanna do is give you an opportunity if you wanna share anything else about you know, exciting things going on at MIST right now, anything you'd like to talk to people about, how they can learn more about MIST, that kind of thing. Yeah, so, so I think, you know, in all, thank you, Tom, uh, in all honesty, um, there is a lot of, uh, um, you know, hype around AI, right? So what I want you to do, as, as, as you all do, as network engineers, is, is, is test it out for yourselves, right? That is the only way, that is the best way. Um, you know, what, you know, if there is one thing I want you to expect out of a missed network that you're going to deploy, um, and, and almost uh, every one of our customers experiences this, is is you deploy it and, and you will actually see support tickets disappear or drop, 
right, dramatically. And and that that isn't something in a, you would find in a dashboard. You really don't. There's nothing in a in the MIST dashboard that'll tell you that we're gonna you're gonna have fewer support tickets. That's sort of the underlying software and the cloud framework that we built. So I can't prove it to you until you test it. So if any of you haven't already gotten a hands on a MIST AP, um, you know, please reach out on Twitter, LinkedIn. Um, um, at Miss Systems or at Sudhir Mata on Twitter or on LinkedIn, and and let's get your journey started. I think um, the only way we win deals is when you get uh, hands on with it. Um, so truly appreciate. Uh, all of the partners that we have on the call, all of the customers we have, we are here today only because on standing on your shoulders, but anyone that's new and dabbling, uh, don't fear, don't fear, uh, uh, you know, you, you can let go of the Cisco shackles and the Aruba shackles. So uh, that's all, Tom. I, I just want everybody to get a hands on Mist AP and there are ways to do that. Uh, the easiest way is attend a Mist Wireless Wednesday, um, uh, um, you know, session. And if you have a reasonable opportunity, uh, they'll send you a missed AP as well. So, uh, Tom, I'll turn it over to you. All right, Sidir. Well, that's a great offer. Thank you very much. And thank you for being with us. And to everyone else, I want to say thank you for participating today. I've loved seeing all of the engagement that has been happening on the platform and all of the discussions that are happening every single session. There is a lot of chat and conversation. People have been using the individual chat rooms and going in there throughout the day. Keep doing that tomorrow. And we will be back with you again at nine o'clock in the morning. Don't miss that opening session. We've got more great presentations for you tomorrow. Again, Sadir, thank you for joining us. And we really appreciate your presentation. Thank you very much. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, everyone. Have a good evening.